Pericardial effusion are not uncommon in routine cardiovascular practice with the incidental finding to cardiac component. Uh, the differential diagnosis of pericardial effusion is extensive and management of pericardial effusion demands on the disease progression and its hemodynamic consequence. Classification the pericard and the mechanism. The pericardial effusion can be classified according to their temporal involvement. That means it may be acute, subacute or chronic. Uh, in clinical practice, uh, subacute is uh, not so common, but acute and chronic uh, pericardial effusion is very common in clinical practice as because the most uh, the causative organism is chronic uh, organisms as like TB, it may long more than three months. And if it's, uh, its effusion is persisting more than three months, then it will be turned as chronic. And mechanism, there is increased production, either by exudate or by transudate. The increased production as a result of inflammation of the cerebral layer, that calls it exudate, and impaired the lymphatic drains of the pericardial space as a result of increased central venous pressure. That means transudate. So, uh, depending upon the protein content and the mechanism involved in the process of fluid accumulation, it can be classified again into exudate and diazudate. But mostly it is uh, incorporated to the mechanism. And the cause, uh, there is so many causes of uh, pericardial effusion. The list is so many and so many and extensive, but for uh, practice and for uh, um, answering in the Bible board, you will have to uh, differentiate uh, some of the important findings. That of them, 50% uh, is idiopathic in developed countries, but not Bangladesh. In more 50% in our country, it is more the chronic infection like tuberculosis. So the etiology is different in many developed countries and developing countries. <clears throat> Infectious and other cancers, it is 10 to 15%. Connective tubules, disorder, iatrogenic, that is PTMC, permanent pacemaker replacement, post injury causes, especially myocardial infarction, post pericardiotomy syndrome, drugs and systemic disorder, hypothyroidism, hypoalbuminum, and liver and kidney disease, and high hydrostatic pressure as in seen in high heart failure. So these are the causes uh, that may lead to uh, pericardial effusion, but there is a big list. But for uh, in money, uh, practical purpose, you will have to memorize like that. That is infection, inflammation, and others. Infection, it's most common tuberculosis in developing country, but idiopathic in development. Inflammatory, there is a um, inflammatory that is remote arthritis, SLE, and rheumatic fever. Others, there's a uremia, malignancy, trauma, and post-myocardial infarction. Among them, malignancy and trauma is most common. And a grading of the pericardial effusion, that is trivial, is small, moderate, and large, uh, depending upon the volume and myocardial pericardium diameter in diastole. <laughs> <coughs> trivial, that is uh, less than 50 ml, among seen only in systole, and that is trivial myocardial pericardial effusion. A small, Fluid is 50 to 100 ml, and it is less than 10 millimeter. Moderate 10 to 20, and large it is more than 20 millimeter. It should be measured in diastole. So it's a, a clean, cut and clear I have a de description of mild, moderate, and severe. And description the posterior atrioventricular group and maybe physiological in case of trivial um, pericardial effusion uh, as because the 50 ml is uh, normal value up to 15 to 50 that is a uh, uh, normal uh, fluid that means presents in the potential space 
between the visceral and the peri parietal peritoneum. And a, a small that is less than uh, 10 millimeters seen throughout the cardiac site there. That is, it is also present in systole and diastole. And it is moderate, it sounds so almost to enter at the heart. <coughs> and lives, that is, uh, a, 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 it is more than 20 millimeter, it is obvious. Clinical presentation. The clinical presentation of patient with pericardial effusion will vary according to the underlying process, rate of accumulation, and the hemodynamic effects. In acutely developing pericardial effusion might present with rapid hemodynamic deterioration due to cardiac tamponing, despite relatively small amount of pericardial effusion. So the amount is not uh, the important. It is important the rapidity at which it can develop. In chronic pericardial effusion, the symptoms might develop over weeks or months, and the patients may be entirely asymptomatic. I will see uh, later the pictures of its development and relation in relation to cardiac temponent. So clinical features may include atypical chest pain, fullness, exertional dyspnea, even or orthopnea and less specific findings such as cough, malaise, and fatigue. So underlying etiology will uh, present according to its uh, only the clinical features of pericardial effusion. It's a dull aching pain or fullness or restrictional sensation. Uh, although these high, uh, symptoms are almost vague, the compression of the local structure can lead to dysphagia, hoarseness, and he go. Physical examination. <clears throat> In uncomplicated cases, the physical examination is unremarkable except the distant heart sound. So uh, depending upon the pericardial effusion, it is mild, moderate, or severe. It can be uh, very the clinical pictures also. The distant heart sounds, it is the only sign that we can encountered in case of uncomplicated cases. But when the complication arises, that means in a cardiac temponent, there may be a sign that is very specific for cardiac temponent. That this heart rate may vary. It may be tachycardia, blood pressure low in cardiac temponent. There is pulsus paradoxus in cardiac temponent. It is a pulsus paradoxus that is it's the variation of the blood pressure during inspiration and expiration. If you look at the right side of this figure, there is a inspiration and expiration variation of the blood pressure level. It is 100 and 110, 20 millimeter uh, in expiration. That is, it is high, more in expiration than in inspiration. It is less than 100 in case of inspiration. So <clears throat> if the variation is more than 10 millimeter of mercury, it is diagnostic in case. So it is pulsus paradoxus. That is it, 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 in normal physiology, the blood pressure reduced in inspiration. This is the exacerbation of the normal variation. This is pulsus paradoxus. It is a total paradoxus. It is a pulse, but we count many, uh, it by blood pressure. And it is normal in normal physiology, but it is exaggerated the normal physiology. And pericardial rub may be present if there is concomitant pericarditis and signs of underlying causes may be present according to etiology. So if you find the X-ray, X-ray may show according to underlying uh, mild, moderate, or severe. If it is mild, it cannot be uh, 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 enlarged, but depending upon the fluid, it may be. The X-ray may show an increase in size of the pericardial chelate when there is large diffusion and global appearance. And ECG, in most of the cases, ECG may be normal, but when the volume is more, there is the typical uh, findings of low voltage ECG. The ECG voltage may be reduced in the presence of large diffusion, and the QRS complex may alternate in the amplitude due to uh, to and fro motion of the heart within the 
fluid filled pericardium that is elliptical alternance there may be a uh, high and low amplitudes of the ecg pattern this is known as the elliptical alternance this is uh, if we feel at the pulse there in where the pulse as alternance so this is a sign of left ventricular failure <clears throat> in case of severe uh, failure heart failure but uh, in ecg if we find uh, one large and small bit it is elliptical alternance echocardiogram is the main diagnostic tool and pericardial synthesis should be reserved for the patient with large pericardial lesion in rare cases ct and mri may be needed to uh, indicate the underlying etiology and uh, this is the right ventricle left ventricle atrium descending aorta and pericardial effusion pleural effusion and uh, there is a question when uh, whether it is a pleural effusion or pericardial effusion that will dictated by the descending aorta if the fluid is in front of the descending aorta it is pericardial it is behind the descending aorta it is pleural effusion so when regarding the uh, confusion of pericardial and pleural effusion in echocardiogram you can clearly decide whether it is pleural effusion or pericardial effusion and uh, these are the chemistry that we can draw from the pericardial effusion uh, that is cytology biomarker and pcr and microbiology the chemistry it may be exuded that is a specific gravity more than 115 and ldas more than 200 mg per dl serum protein ratio blood cell glucose cell count cytology cell for cancer biomarker for cancer and pcr for a specific infection agents especially tuberculosis there is lot of enhancement in the polymerase chain reaction that will dictate the underlying etiology and microbiology first of last of all to for acbs bacilli microbiome tuberculosis both staining and culture and this is a diagnostic algorithm the, the cardiac component or suspected bacterial or neoplastic etiology if it, it is yes it should be a pericardial synthesis and etiology search for its diagnostic method if there is no uh, sus evidence that tamponent or bacterial suspected or neoplastic etiology then ele uh, elevated many uh, inflammation marker crp and pericardial pericarditis if it is pericarditis or elevated crp then empirical anti inflammatory therapy and if it is not associated then as uh, if it is um, associated with a specific disease we will go for the specific disease search and for treatment if there is no as a specific etiology and no elevated marker or other cardiac component or suspected then a large pericardial effusion that is more than 200 then consider for pericardial synthesis otherwise if it is not large and that is more than 20 mm it should be managed conservatively so this is the algorithm for uh, treatment of pericardial effusions and treatment should be directed to the underlying causes if pericarditis treatment of pericarditis is the goal idiopathic that is viral a combination of the non steroidal anti inflammatory drug and colchicine is recommended in relapsing pericardial effusion longer treatment course should be prescribed especially 3 to 6 month corticosteroid should be limited to a specific situation and in patients in whom non steroidal anti inflammatory data are contraindicated immunosuppressive agents should be reserved to a multidisciplinary team in the management of refractory pericarditis so uh, we can use anti inflammatory drugs corticosteroids and immunosuppressant depending upon the severity and relapsing condition of these patients and aspirin is recommended as the first line therapy in post mi pericarditis and pericardial synthesis should be reserved in patient with large pericardial effusion or in patient with pericardial tamponin a specific bacterial infection and especially for malignant cases
and pericardiotomy might also be an option in selected cases. When the medical management fails, uh, there is repeated uh, pericardial effusion, and there is a surgical option to excise the pericardium and evolve the pericardium. So there is no potential space in between the cerebral and pericardial layer, and there is no chance for accumulation of the fluid, and the fluid is directly absorbed into the system. And this is the uh, last reports for pericardiotomy in case of pericardial effusion. Sometimes in malignant cases, uh, they uh, perform this to avoid repeated accumulation, but this is not uh, a, a healthy and wealthy option for treatment of the pericardial synthesis with malignancy. As because the, if we can treat the malignancy and we can stop the prog progression, it will uh, 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 secondarily reduces the pericardial effusion. And uh, there, uh, there is a guideline from the 2015 that they have summarized in this way that the essential indication to drain a pericardial effusion that is cardiac tamponade, number one, suspicion of the bacteria or neoplastic etiology that we have discussed, and persistent moderate to large pericardial effusion without responding to medical therapy. These are the three indications in which we can perform the pericardiosynthesis. And a, tri I mean, a trial system is proposed based on the following. We recognize the cardiac component and possible bacterial neoplastic etiology, exclude the concomitant pericarditis and treat the pericarditis, identify associated underlying disease, and if chronic, that is uh, large, more than 20, consider pericardial drainage to prevent cardiac component during follow-up. That is the if it is followed from the treatment trials algorithm. The treatment of pericardial issues should be tailored as much as possible to the underlying utility. This is in short uh, the recommendation from the ESC 2015. Prognosis simply prognosis depends on the underlying utility. Uh, Equation is related to underlying utility. Large pericardial equation carry 30% chance of the cardiac tamponade. The risk of developing the constrictive pericarditis in very small uh, is a very small in idiopathic pericarditis. It is especially possible if there is an infectious, that is, purulent infections in uh, some types of bacterial infections and also in tubercular infections. Next, uh, the cardiac component. Uh, this is, uh, uh, in, in many short, uh, the, the pericardial effusion. Uh, it is not the pericardial effusion that will problem uh, in our day-to-day practice. It is the underlying disease that may lead to pericardial effusion, that is repeated pericardial effusion with hemodynamic compromise. That is the problem. If the underlying cardiac condition is good and LV function and there is no arrhythmia, the patient will respond very promptly to the medical management also. And this is a very life-threatening condition that is cardiac tamponade. Sometimes it may come in examination as a short note. Most of the times you will face this question in cardiac tamponade in viva table as because uh, we ask you from uh, X-ray and from ECG and from cardiac emergency. What are the emergency that you have dealt uh, when you, in your day-to-day -day, uh, CCU practice? And uh, the, of them, cardiac tamponade is uh, one of them, uh, except the cardiac arrest. The cardiac arrest is the most important and most vital uh, cardiac emergency. After that, you may uh, term the cardiac tamponade as because it presents with cardiogenic shock. And <clears throat> cardiogenic uh, shock, uh, that may be no pulse, uh, blood pressures, and patient may be gasping along with respiratory failure. So cardiac tamponade is a hemodynamic de-arrangement that secondary to increased intrapericardial pressure and impaired cardiac feeling. Uh, essentially, any form of disease that affects the pericardium can potentially lead to cardiac tamponade. Uh, 
সো এনি ডিজিজ এই সোয়েল যাচ্ছ নাকি যাওয়ার সময় এই কাগজগুলো নিয়ে যাস এসেনশিয়ালি এনি ফর্ম অফ দি ডিজিজ দ্যাট অ্যাফেক্টস দি পেরিকার্ডিয়াম ক্যান পটেনশিয়ালি লিড টু কার্ডিয়াক টেম্পোনেন্ট টেম্পোনেন্ট ক্যান অলসো অকার হোয়েন ব্লাড পাচ অর ক্লোটস মে অকুপাই দি পেরিকার্ডিয়াল স্পেস সো অনলি দি ফ্লুইড ইট মে বি পাচ ইট মে বি ব্লাড অর মে বি ক্লোটস and pathophysiology and the clinical presentation the clinical presentation of the cardiac component depends on the tempo with which the pericardial fluid accumulates and intrapericardial pressure rises uh, which will directly reflect the pericardial compliance when there is pericardial volume changes accordingly a small amount of fluid in the pericardial space results in significant abrupt elevation of the intrapericardial pressure that may lead to sudden hemodynamic decompensation and the settings of the chronic pericardial patient the pericardium is stressed out and is able to accommodate the liters of fluid without any hemodynamic consequence so in chronic cases the, there may be a large amount of fluid but without pericardial component but in a good setting Uh, there, there is a small amount of fluid may accumulated in the pericardial space and that can increase the intrapericardial pressure and that will compress the heart for uh, the filling. The pressure volume curve in, is much less strip if it increases the pericardial pressure uh, subacutely and chronically. If, uh, we will discuss it later. Uh, this is the uh, in right side there is a volume and there is a pressure there is a relationship between the volume and the pressure if it develops chronically the limit that is a limit of pericardial stress it will uh, accommodate a large amount and then the uh, limit of the pericardial stress is exceeded but in case of uh, uh, acute state when the blood uh, or fluid or the fast accumulated in the pericardial space very rapidly then it crosses the limit of pericardial stress very rapidly and it produces uh, the symptoms that is the cardiac tamponade but in case it, it uh, there is a large volume and m- most of the time after it uh, stresses that is the, the limit of pericardial stresses so it is not the fluid not the volume but it is the rapidity as soon as the volume accumulates in the, the intrapericardial space that may leads to pericardial tamponade <coughs> pathophysiology and the clinical presentation and intrapericardial pressure rises in patient with cardiac tamponade and the elevated pericardial pressure is transmitted to all four chambers affecting the diastolic patients as we know the right ventricle and the right atrium is thin all the structures so a cardiac tamponade will affect more toward the right side of the heart than the left side of the heart right atrium uh, transmural pressure decreases markedly and the heart systemic venous pressure increases uh, so uh, there may be evidence of inguts venous pressures and hepatic congestions and other peripheral congestion but the beauty is lies here that uh, it is surprisingly spares the lungs we will find the uh, findings of congestive heart failure without the involvement of the lung this will have dictated the clue that there may be a way pericardial pulmonary constrictive pericarditis especially uh, in later and chronic state but in case of uh, acute state that is uh, cardiac tamponade there uh, may be uh, elevation of the venous pressures the changes that occur in cardiac tamponade corresponds to marked pathological exacerbation of the normal pericardial physiology with inspiration the right ventricular stroke volume increases secondary to venous return while the left ventricular stroke volume decreases this is the origin of the pulses paradoxes uh, this is explained by, by, by paradoxes but when there is exacerbation they term this pulses paradoxes originally uh, this was uh, described as paradoxes as because in inspiration there is may increase in right sided uh, stroke volume but it decreases the left sided stroke volume 
as the right ventricular diastolic filling is further compromised both ventricles become underfilled and the cardiac output decreases that leads to hypotension shock and ultimately death unless the pericardial lead pushing is trained if there is a reduced right ventricular stroke volume subsequently it will hamper the left ventricular stroke volume also as because the heart is a closed chamber that depends on the stroke volume from the right and also from the left <clears throat> so causes of tamponade again uh, if we find the acute causes uh, in most of the cases there may be a insult that is cardiac rupture following mi cardiac surgery aortic dissection or cardiac perforation secondary to procedures as for example pacemaker implantation or ptmc like that most common in case of ptmc may, most of the times the uh, um, uh, uh, interventional cardiologist perform the heart and they leads to pericardial effusion mom or sir will ask if you have seen this pericardial effusion developed during the procedure and what they will perform you will answer the yes sir i have seen this one or two when uh, in uh, procedures and there may be accumulation of the fluid in pericardial effusion then what to do they will perform the auto transfusion auto transfusion means they puncture the uh, pericardial when uh, puncture in the xiphoesternal process and they introduce a needle into the pericardial space and from pericardial space they draw the fluids and enter into the systemic circulation that is they draw fluid from the pericardial space and then it enters into the venous line so in this way they maintain the auto transfusion uh, and uh, ultimately if the perforation is small most of the time the uh, perforation will seal up otherwise if you don't perform the auto transfusion most of the patient will die from cardiogenic shock as because there is a large volume of uh, fluids accumulated in the pericardial space and there is no need uh, water uh, transfusion of the blood immediately and patient will not survive up to the, that proportion so in case of cardiac perforation during procedure auto transfusion may be when is life saving and other cases uh, there is a cro chronic condition of all the causes that can leads to pericardial effusion that may leads to cardiac tamponade also bacterial viral tubercular mi collagen uh, uh, the rheumatoid arthritis uremia malignancy and uh, hypothyroidism anticoagulant therapy and pulmonary arterial hypertension uh, clinical presentation the tamponade uh, uh, will Uh, uh, present like that uh, should always be considered in patient presenting with shock and elevated venous pressure and explained hypotension in clinical decompensation in the settings of in the known pericardial effusion or recent intracardiac manipulation or intrapericardial procedures or after the trauma or cardiac surgery you will know, should uh, think um, uh, or you should a look close look to the intracardiac procedures or if it is known cases of pericardial effusion and in that scenario if you find the shock and elevated venous pressure and hypotension then you can suspect that it may be a case of cardiac tamponade and patient with insidious development of cardiac tamponade might complain of reduced functional capacity non specific chest pain or fatigue and here the pulse is rapid that is tachycardia blood pressures that is hypertension this is the classical signs blood pressure that is reduced in pulses paradoxus it should be described under the heading of pulse that is a pulses paradoxus gbp elevated when in the absence of y descent y descent that means during uh, the uh, 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 rapid filling of the ventricle uh, when the valves is open uh, there is a wide descent and wide descent uh, many absent as because the ventricle cannot right ventricle cannot take the blood 
apex apical impulse might not be palpable or might be hyperkinetic. Cardiac concentration reveals distant heart sound. Lungs should be clear on a sculpture. There is a classical science that is break types, hypotension, distant neck veins, and distant heart sounds. So these three things, that is hypotension, distended neck, and distended heart sound, is, uh, though it's rarely present, but in the exams, most of the teachers are very much fond of to this triad, uh, that's big strides. If it's the sinus tachycardia, electric alternance, there is change of the P wave and axis, low voltage ECG, ST changes, if associated with underlying pericarditis. There is four stages of pericarditis changes in ECG and that you may have encountered in this situation. Extra cardiomegaly in large pericardial location, but entirely normal if the fluid is minimum or moderate. Frugal fluid may be present to the echocardiogram and Doppler. Echocardio confirm the presence of the pericardial effusion and the size of the effusion does not favor or exclude the presence of cardiac tamponade. Echocardiogram, there is a many sign uh, by which we can detect the pericardial effusion. That is inferior vena cava. There is dilated inferior vena cava and a sign of impaired diastolic filling. Uh, there is a, a in expiratory and expiratory inflow uh, pattern uh, in mitral velocity. That is the hallmark of pericardial restriction and Doppler sign. And expiratory uh, vein flow river, river itself. These are the findings. That is a pericardial effusion, it detected an echo. And this is the inspiratory and expiratory inflow of mitral bulb. If you put the Doppler echocardiogram on mitral bulb, you will find this variation uh, in expiration and in inspiration. There is a, a, a expiratory and inspiratory variation. And there is a, a reverse uh, when a movement of the interventricular septal, uh, interdependences and uh, inferior banner cover flow uh, when a vein reversal. Uh, this is a bit complicated. Uh, if we, if you go through the books, you will detect this all these things here. And this is the uh, pericardial effusion here, and the there is a uh, collapse of the uh, uh, RB. There is a collapse of the right ventricle in diastole. Uh, compression of the uh, diastole. Uh, this is a sign of pericardial uh, temponent. Doppler recovery, respiratory flow reserve. Cardiac catheterization will show the elevated right atrium and left sided filling pressure with the equalization of the end diastolic pressure. In acute temponent, the left sided filling pressure might be lower. The main diagnostic features of cardiac temponent is blunting or absence by uh, is, is blunting or absence of the wide descent of right atrial tracing as a result of impaired right ventricular early diastolic filling. When the valve opens, there may be a rush of blood coming from the right atrium to right ventricle, but this is impaired. So there is a blunting or absence of the AOI descent. And there is a A, C, and D. And there is a X descent, and there is also a Y descent. Here, a Y descent is absent. This is X descent, and a Y descent is not present here. B. B means ventricular uh, atrial delay. When the atrial ventricular valve is closed, blood accumulated within the left uh, right atrium. And when the valve opens, there may be a sharp decline of the uh, right atrial pressure. And uh, it, it, this is the situation when the right ventricular pressure uh, will not drop, uh, though the uh, diastole is going on. Treatment cardiac temponent uh, is a ca uh, cardiac emergency and should be treated with prompt needle car pericardiosynthesis unless it is caused by aortic dissection. Only the contraindication aortic dissection. 
the goal should be aspirated to all the pericardial fluid. Need for surgical pericardial stenosis is rare. That is removal of clots and bath or simultaneous repair of the damaged cardiac structure. If we go for the summary of 2015, in patient with clinical suspension of pericardial tamponade, echocardiography is recommended to evaluate the size, location, and degree of the hemodynamic impact of the pericardial equation. Urgent pericardial synthesis or cardiac surgery is recommended to treat cardiac tamponade. Judicial clinical evaluation, including echocardiography finding, is recommended to guide the timing of the pericardial synthesis. Vasodilator diuretics are not recommended in the presence of cardiac tamponade. So thank you very much. Uh, this is in short, uh, the pericardial tamponade and the pericardial effusion that we encountered in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. And this is another sub subtext that is a common uh, specific disease or this tubercular pericarditis and constrictive pericarditis. Constrictive pericardial disease it is also important as because there is a uh, comparison between the constrictive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Constrictive pericardial this is a thickened pericardium like the gondor. So in short, this is the presentation. Sorry, Minal, I have a technical problem. कथा इंटरनेक्ट कर डेट शनिवार Sir, like the question chill was sir. I mean, steroid indication in case of pericardial effusion. It take to sir, just the arc bar repeat back clear korte. Pericardial effusion is steroid. I mean, medical I man non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. The or for just the man response na kore. To akun apne dite parbe na bengi specific. Just the collagen vascular disease tha ke jagula response korte se na. Shegular jeno dite parbe. एवं अपनी जो दी ट्यूबर क्लोसिस था के शेख क्षेत्र अपने दिते पार बन स्पेसिफिक कोटों गुला डिजीज़ एक क्षेत्र है अदरवाइज अपनी जो अपनी इंडिकेशन नहीं मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट ना अपने मैक्सिमम के तो है कि पेरिकार्डियल इपुशन जेटा से टेम्पोनेंट ना टेम्पोनेंट है तो ऑलवेज अपने पेरिकार्डियल এখন আন্ডারলাইন ইটিলোজি ট্রিট করতে যে যদি আপনার কাছে ইনফেকশাস ম্যাক্সিমাম 50% ইনফেকশাস এবং টিউবারকুলোসিসই থাকে তাহলে টিউবারকুলোসিস থাকলে সেই ক্ষেত্রে আপনার মানে টিউবারকুলোসিস এর সাথে তো আপনার স্টোর দিতে হবে এখন মানে কোলাজেন ভাস্কুলার ডিজিজ এর সাথেও আপনার দিতে হবে যদি রেসপন্স না করে তাহলে মানে আন্ডারলাইন ডিজিজ প্লাস মেডিকেল ফেইলর অফ মেডিকেল ম্যানেজমেন্ট উইথ নন স্টোরাল অ্যান্টি ইনফ্ল্যামেটরি क्षेत्रेंस डोजे <laughs> <laughs> 
এরপরে কমাই দেয় তাই ম্যাক্সিমাম ক্ষেত্রে তিন সপ্তাহ পরে আপনার ই করে ট্যাপ করে ফ্লুইডের উপরে এবং ইসের উপরে ম্যানেজমেন্টের উপরে রাখে এটা ক্লিনিক্যাল সিনারিওর উপরে যদি پیشنটের ই কমতে থাকে ভালো তার আরো তাড়াতাড়ি কমাই নাই দুই সপ্তাহের মধ্যে কমাই নাও যেতে পারে অনেক ক্ষেত্রে এক মাস পর্যন্ত দেওয়া লাগে দেড় মাসও স্ট্রয়েড কন্টিনিউয়াস দেওয়া লাগে আমি অনেক সারকে দেখছি যে ওই যে মানে ফোর ড্রাগ যে প্রথম চার মাস দেয় ফোর চার মাসে সেই দিয়ে রাখে পুরোটাই স্ট্রয়েড দিয়ে রাখে জি স্যার थैंक यू স্যার স্যার আমার একটু ইয়ে ছিল স্যার ওই যে আমরা স্যার অনেক সময় অনেক রিপোর্টে দিছি যে মিনিমাল পেরিকার্ডিয়াল ইফিশিয়েন্ট লিখি স্যার মিনিমাল লিখব না ট্রিভিয়াল লিখব স্যার এখন স্যার এটা এটা মিনিমাল আর ট্রিভিয়াল এর মধ্যে পার্থক্য খুব বেশি ট্রিভিয়াল বলতে মিনিমাল এরও কম বোঝায় মানে আপনি মানে ভাষাগত দিক থেকে আপনি যদি ট্রিভিয়াল বলেন আপনি উল্লেখ করতে যে আমি না বললেও পারতাম তো একটু বললাম আর কি তোমাকে এই যে ট্রিভিয়াল আছে ওই যে ট্রিভিয়াল এমআর রাখে মানে কোন রকম মেশিন যদি খুব ভালো হয় সেনসিটিভিটি খুব ভালো হয় তাহলে খুব খুব মিনিমাল ট্রি এমআর ধরা পড়ে মেশিন খুব ভালো না হইলে কিন্তু মিনিমাল এমআর ধরা পড়ে না ওই রকমই মেশিন খুব ভালো হইলে আপনি মিনিমাল পেরিকার্ডিয়াল ইফিউশন বা ট্রিভিয়াল পেরিকার্ডিয়াল ইফিউশন আপনি ধরতে পারেন আপনি 10 মিলিমিটারের নিচে যেটা আছে সেটা আমি তো আপনার হলো যে মিনিমাল ট্রিভিয়াল এই গ্রুপের মধ্যে নিচে বলে কেউ এরকম বলে সেটা এই নাই টেন মিলিমিটারের নিচে একটা থাকতে পারবে আপনার মানে কিছুদিন আগে একটা ছিল না ছেলে তো ভালোই কিন্তু কিন্তু কি গাড়ি ভালো কিন্তু মাঝে মাঝে আপনার ব্রেক ফেল করে পরীক্ষার সময় ওই যে ভাইবোর্ডে পেরিকার্ডিয়াল ইফিউশন থাকে তো পেরিকার্ডিয়াল ইফিউশনের কচ জিজ্ঞাসা করে এত কচ জিজ্ঞাসা করে আর হইলো পেরিকার্ডিয়াল ইফিউশনের বলতে পারে না অনেক সময় বলেও না কিন্তু আমি দেখছি যে আমার সাথে বসে সে মানে বলছে যে মানে টেল মি দি স্পেসিফিক ফাইন্ডিং তারপরে যখন তার বললো স্যার এগুলো তো টেম্পোনেন্টের ফিচার্স কারে টেম্পোনেন্টই তোমার তো জিজ্ঞাসা করছে 
তখন আর আমি আর কিছু বলি নেই যাক এটা তো মানে ওই না স্যারদের হিসাব দেখে বলতে হবে টেম্পোনেন্টটা ভালো করে মনে রাখতে হবে ওই যে ওয়াই ডিসেন্টটা থাকে না এইটা স্যারদের মাথার মধ্যে আছে কিন্তু এবং কনস্ট্রাকটিভ প্রিকালিটিসে আবার ওয়াই ডিসেন্ট থাকে হ্যাঁ এইটা আবার স্যাররা দুই জায়গা থেকে ধরে বসে তুমি প্যারিকার্ডিয়াল টেম্পোনেন্ট আর হলো কনস্ট্রাকটিভ প্যারিকার্ডিটিস এক করে ফেলো কি না এটা দেখে এই না থাকলে অনেক বাজে এগারোটা বাজে আমরা শেষ করতে চাই